Good morning, everyone. What a turnout. Thank you so much for coming out to spend your Saturday of Comic-Con with us. This is celebrating 100 years of Disney with the Disney Bound. My name is Kelsey. Online I go by Van Kelsey. I will be your moderator today, and I'm going to kick it straight to my panelists and have them introduce themselves and maybe what you better know them on as by online. Hi, my name is Mikey of Mikey's Moments. Now, we talked about it earlier, but I don't remember which floor she is now. 
the purple one. The purple one. <laughs> that worked with my culture, being that I am a hijabi, so I kind of incorporated my hijab into the color scheme, as well as the maxi dress that is 50 styles theme that I did find online very, very quickly bought. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so 
So again, Disney Bounding is now about 13 years old. I would love to hear what is to parody off of Comic-Con. What's everyone's origin story for discovering Disney Bounding? How did you get into it? What was your first look? What is your origin story? Um, let's throw this to Erica. I believe you are one of the most original members of this community. Um, yeah, so back in the Tumblr days, I Tumblr. <laughs> I've always been a huge Disney fan, always loved fashion. My sister started seeing, actually it was Pinterest, believe it or not. My sister saw on Pinterest these outfits made by yours truly over here. Um, and they were, you know, like Disney style, but characters. And she was like, you need to see this. You'd be very into it. And I think you should try it next time you're going to Disneyland. And so I check it out while I'm absolutely in love. I'm like, this is so cool because I'm not really like, a cosplay costume girl most of the time. Love to put together a cute outfit though, and I love Disney characters, so immediately, I think Princess and the Frog was like, new at that point. So I immediately was like, I want to do this. I grabbed my husband, I was like, we're doing this. And I posted to Tumblr, and then um, I think Leslie saw it and like, re retumbled it? <laughs> 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 Reblogged it. <laughs> between us and I was like I wonder who else is doing this so I actually went ahead and started I planned a meetup at Disneyland to find other Disney founders because I wanted to make friends and see like if anyone else was catching this trend Leslie helped promote that and like plan it and I expected like maybe like 10 12 people to show up there were 200 people at that first meetup and from so there I was really happy with they us. loved it <laughs> <laughs> and from there we had been chatting a lot in the <laughs> on Facebook, we were chatting a lot, and I was like, wow, we should start, like, a group so we can stay in touch now that this event is over. So we started a group. Leslie joined on as admin. Tiffany's an admin, too, now. is an admin. And we've been going strong for all those years, and I've met so many friends, and it's just kind of become part of my life now. The group's called Disney Bounders Unite, if anyone wants to join it. Well, not on Facebook. Is anyone still on Facebook? We're still using Facebook. And anyone else, feel free to jump in. I'd love to hear how everyone found the community. What was your first Disney bound? So I found the community through a friend of mine. I was living out of state for a while, and when I came back, moved to California. We went to, she introduced it to me through Dapper Day. So one, I learned about Dapper Day. Two, I learned about Disney bounding. And the first bound I ever did was my favorite princess of all time, Princess Ariel. And the evolution, I can tell you from that to now, Wow. But um, she was like, oh, we are going to Disney bound, and I'm going to do this, this, and that. And I was like, what are you talking about? I have no idea what that means. She's like, well, you know, adults can't wear costumes to Disneyland, right? I was like, yeah, I know that. She goes, well, you take pieces of clothing, and you kind of turn it into a character, and you modify it to a specific era, and whatever era you want. And since it's Dapper Day, you know, you can do the 50s, or you can do the 60s. And I was like, this is so stinking cool. And I went on a shopping ramp page after that. <laughs> All the tiny little details, seashells, sweater clips, and the sweaters, and the vests, and all of that to try to make it as aerialist and 50s as possible. And as obviously the 50s is my favorite as I chose the 50s again today. <laughs> I actually think, okay, so I got into Disney founding. I became a class holder as an adult. It was like, for the first time. Got really into the Disney community, started making friends, and I made friends with people who were already Disney founders. So I was like, oh, I'm a cosplayer, for, like first and foremost. So I was like, oh, we're playing dress up? I'm in, okay, let's go. <laughs> and actually my first Disney film that I ever did was Cruella. So this is like a full circle for So I would love to know, how do you keep Disney bounding fresh and fulfilling after years and years of doing maybe same characters over and over again, new characters? And I'd love to start this question with Tiffany. So every March, Leslie does something called the Disney Bound Challenge. It's 31 days of prompts, challenges, interpret as you will. And Tiffany has not missed this challenge a single day in seven years. So I think I did the math wrong. Eight years! Eight years, so that's over 200 looks. So I'd love, Tiffany, how, let's start with you on this. Yes, this was my eighth year. <laughs> Can you believe? I cannot. Um, it's actually 
not as difficult as I thought it was going to be to keep it fresh. I thought I would fizzle out after like my fifth challenge, but now I'm like, I've got to at least make it to 10. I'm already <laughs> almost there. But like a couple of things that I do, so I'm keeping it fresh, because eventually you have done almost every Disney character I've ever made eventually. I like to go back and redo a lot of balance that I used to do a long, 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 long time ago that I didn't love that I'm like, now that I have like a little more fashion and sense uh, about me that I like differently, I would change it up and make a better bound that I like more for a character that I love. And then I also really, really, really love to go extremely obscure. So characters no one thinks about, people in the background, maybe somebody who has like one line in a movie. That's really fun for me also. So, and, it's, and I also like to ask people on the internet, especially during March now, I'm like, give me ideas. And people come up with some really funny things that I've never thought of. So that's, oh, like this past year, I think, I never looked at the prompts the entire month of March. That was another way I kept it fresh for me this year. I think I looked at the prompts the day before, each day. So then, yeah, no, I didn't plan, because that's how I stopped myself from shopping. Those are available I ignored them. Yeah. I didn't want to prep. So literally the night before and the day before, I'm like, what's tomorrow's prompt? And then if I had no ideas, I'd be like, somebody help me with like, this is the prompt. And sometimes people would just be like, oh, like one year Erica was like, you should be like a clam, the clam from Alice in Wonderland. And I was like, huh. And then I thought about it, and I was like, I think I actually have every single piece from that in my closet. Perfect. And it's one of my favorites you've ever done. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, like people come up with really random things that I don't even think of, and I'm just like, okay, let me go dig in my garage. I have a big old bin in my garage of just like random clothes. I'm just like, can I do this? Yeah. It's fun. It keeps it fresh. Yeah, so what you're saying is if you're someone who's a clothing hoarder or hangs on to everything forever, <laughs> this is the hobby for you. Yeah. <laughs> I am a clothing hoarder. I realized I have clothes from high school. I have a pair of pants, I'm about to date myself, from 579 that are, I still wear. They are my good black pants. <laughs> Pernell, I'd love to hear from you on this. I, you're someone who does such a good job of, I see you from every single cinematic universe that's under the Disney umbrella. Marvel, Star Wars, Pixar, everything. I'd love to hear your process with this. How do you keep this fresh and fulfilling, especially diving into all of those universes? Um, well, well, first off, I learned about Disney Bound via YouTube, and it was mostly women dominated. And I think the way I keep it fresh is I always try to bound the women characters because I feel like those are the most challenging. Um, trying to get the right silhouette and finding the right textures and whatever evokes that character's emotion. So I think my process for keeping it fresh is just doing things outside of my gender norm and just like tapping into that and seeing what I can come up with that would surprise me. Yeah. This actually leads perfectly into my next question, which is going to be, how do you go about Disney bounding a character of a gender other than your own? As you can see, we have two princesses that are on this panel, Mikey and Purnell, so I would love to hear your process. Oh, well, you know, there's no limitation on my gender on what you can and can't wear. I think what makes it so easy is that it's just color scheme for me. Like, her red cape, her little blue blouse, her yellow pants, <laughs> and of course, I'll back to match, you know. But yeah, I think going back to the last question a little bit is that there are always, the universes are always expanding. Where are my Star Wars girlies at? Yeah. You know, like getting to, like when new shows and series are coming out, like doing Mandalorian inspired, Grogu, like, ooh, so Anyways, but yeah, the universe is always expanding, whether there's Marvel shows, Star Wars shows, you know, it's always expanding, there's always new ground to step into. Please. I'd also like to say, like, gender aside, like, I'm bounding as a cricket. Like, it's, like, it's all about color scheme, you know, it doesn't even matter what gender or species. Species, yeah. <laughs> like, what species Hi, I'm a flower. Right. <laughs> and I was going to say, I, 
Becky, what I've always loved about your Disney bands, you always do such a great job of accessorizing, but also blending textures. So if you, I would love to hear you speak to how do you go about picking those, and especially for the princesses, you know, so much of animation, we see a flat image, that there's not a lot of texture or richness to that, but when you bring them into the real world, again, the cape is the perfect example, you have such a sense of the grandeur and the weight of the character because you brought that texture. Your bow is velvet. It feels more of the character because it has the weight to it more than you could ever really display in the animation. Yeah, this was one of the outfits that I wore for a Dapper Day, so it's a little more formal. It's got like some fun ruffles and a shirt, and yeah, again, when you bring it into real life, there's textures to always consider when styling. There's like the lace of the cape lift, again, the velvet of the bow, this kind of satiny sheen to the shirt. There's always that's another way to keep it fresh is that like you can do the character very dressed up or you can do the character very dressed down. There's a million ways and you can do it over and over again and always there's a new take on the character and style. Now I would love to hear from everyone. Um, chicken and the Egg, when you started Disney Bounding, were you pulling from Disney Bounding styles you'd seen? Were you pulling from your own style? How has that changed over the years? I would love to start with Dolly because of your beautiful statement about we're bringing back my high school outfits. I started Disney Bounty because of Dapper Day, and it was easy because everyone was doing it, and it kind of, like, I kind of felt like there was this box, like, okay, we're going to Dapper Day, it's a circle skirt, it's a blouse, my husband's going to wear a vest and a tie, and then we're just going to get these colors and these little accessories, and that was it. Um, but then I really loved the idea of expanding into like your everyday life. So I wear scrubs for work and like sometimes like looking for like Halloween um, like color block and I like turn the you know, set of scrubs into an auto bound. I've done like Peter Pan and just with like, little accessories here and there. Um, I'm sorry, what was your question? <laughs>
have to treat clothing like so much of a uniform, and I know for us as adults, this has given us such an opportunity to reach beyond that and really have fun with your wardrobe and really get to dress how you always wanted to see yourself in the mirror. I know, I think many of our panelists can speak to it, watching these movies as kids, or we were watching, going, I want to look like that when I grow up. And now as an adult, we can't wear a costume to the park, but we certainly can wear something like this acceptably. Not that you could tell today, but since we found it, it helped me start wearing color. I think that's why I think that's why I only found it as Phillips at first, because ninety percent of my wardrobe is black. Like that's all I wear is black. So it pushed me a little bit out of my comfort zone. I started, you know, buying things that are green and red and purple. You can't you can't see it, but she's wearing bright red boots right yes. now. Yes, show boots. <laughs> obviously make it, you know, however you want. It doesn't have to be exact to that character. So I love incorporating, like, all my shoes into any bound that I do. Not right now, but <laughs> other rounds, I have never even put my sneakers on for it. <laughs> and actually, Janelle, I would love to hear more about your process, because obviously so many of these movies are set in very specific eras. But you do such a great job of taking modern, current fashion and streetwear fashion, but you still totally know who this character is. So I'd love to hear more about your process of taking a period costume and tour outfit and then updating it to be a modern look. Well, I mean, there's also so many shoes for everything, too. So I have over 100 pair of sneakers. Or 2,000, two, sorry, 200 pair of sneakers. But, <laughs> so for me, it's a little bit... I have a variety to like choose from um, and stuff. So I, I just think now, like, what would that character wear if like they were a sneakerhead? You know, like, what shoes can I incorporate with this look? Um, but when it's like periodic stuff, like today and everything, like obviously, like I'll switch it up. <laughs> I don't mind wearing the heels and stuff. Um, but yeah. Anyone else would like to jump in on that, please? I, I was going to say, Erica is the reverse. I was going to say, Erica, you've really embraced 70s fashion, so I've been seeing you take a perfect example today of how do I take the 70s aesthetic that's become so near and dear to me and taking care of people not 70s. Obviously, Star Wars lived so deeply in that, so it's a perfect fit, but um, yeah, please speak, speak to your process. Yeah, I've just been finding that I really enjoy 70s silhouettes, so it's, I mean, Disney building is still the same no matter what your personal style is. You're still going back to the character's color. You're going back to their accessories. You're going back to, you know, kind of what their general energy is. What's their vibe? Like, what's their stories? And incorporating that into your accessories and pieces. And so if I can take any kind of, like, 70s romper or colors or accessories or bell sleeve tops that I have and just figure out what characters they work for, essentially. Like, Leia was very, very easy. Like, I almost feel like I'm cheating, but I'm really happy with how the outfit came out. It's, I think that the more you own your personal style, the easier Disney about make becomes. Um, just to circle back to Janelle, like, and I, I don't mean to, like, ask a question. <laughs> Please! But, but, like, so how would you do a street-style Jimmy Cricket? Like, how would you, like, make it, um, like, what, would, what pieces would you wear? Like, would you wear, like, different pants? So I probably do an oversized orange shirt, um, maybe a black hoodie or jacket, um, green, green shorts, biker shorts, uh, short shorts so that the t-shirt's oversized, um, and shoes. Let's see. <laughs> So right, I know <laughs> what's in my closet right now. Um, any brown shoes? There's Mocha, Air Jordan ones. There's any of the Travis Scott ones. Um, yeah. Thank you for sharing your process. Yeah. <laughs> what, what would you use? Go down the list. And then hat-wise, do you want to use oh, the hat standard or? Maybe a bucket hat, or even a, a dad hat. Yeah. That's not totally I can see the yeah. <laughs> I'm putting it together. Just wear that. I think you have to wear that next week. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to wear it to the park. <laughs> yeah, now we need the update in a couple right. days. Thank you. Thanks, Dolly. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so uh, 
um, obviously all of us have giant wardrobes that we've accumulated over the years. We have all collected things, we've sourced things, so I'd love to hear everyone's process. Um, Dolly, I'm going to start with you again, and also Amber, um, since you created. Dolly is a phenomenal seamstress who has built amazing cosplays and Disney bounds, and I would love to hear the process. Rather than shopping for what you have, how do you source and alter things you have in your possession already? Very slightly different shades of gold and yellow, and I braided 
them together to add a, the braid. I've done a red scarf for Ariel's hair. I like it. Using my scarf as an accessory has been such an amazing thing and helps and makes. I feel like the bound is so complete with it. So and it shows a piece of me as well. So I get to take a piece of me into the character that that I'm picking and that I'm loving. So it's definitely so much fun to incorporate and use that for myself. And she always looks so cute. Aww. all loved and it's become a part of our life. I'd love to know, have you seen folks celebrating and um, showing their creativity in other ways during this whole year? Um, within the community. Like, with Disney fans? Yeah. Um, I mean, like, as Disney fans, I feel like we're constantly embracing and celebrating Disney every day and through our Disney bounds. Um, I mean, there's been Logan and Lauren who've done basically this exact project um, in terms of doing the decades through Disney Now Day. Um, I guess we do it every day. I feel like it's been encouraging people to channel a lot of the older films that we kind of forget about sometimes because we like to focus on the new, but I know it's been making me think more about like some of the classics. I forgot that I know if you've been doing more of the like classics as far as like your when you're making Disney films. All right, this is a question. Every single panel, what is your advice for someone who wants to make their first Disney bound or start out Disney bounding? I am going to start with Mikey. <laughs> For me, I love wearing color, in case you haven't noticed. And like, the thing is, Disney bounding inspired me to be more bold with, because normally I would never put like, these primary colors together when I'm walking around on the street. But for Disney bounding in the parks, you know, you got to nail the character on the head of the color scheme. So again, if you want to start out, obviously go to your closet first. What do you have? What can you work with? Can you put it together just out of your closet? And then sometimes, well, I like to very guilty of like buying maybe this or that or the other. I mean, a plethora of bags and accessories like over lounge wise and all my fit. Sometimes the bag comes first. It just depends, but yeah. Um, I would probably say start with your favorite character. And even if it's like a, a deep cut character, someone's going to notice who you are. So it, honestly, just, just go ahead and do it. It doesn't matter. I'd say find what you love and what you're comfortable in, what you, if it makes you happy and you're comfortable in your own outfit and you feel good in it, stick with it. And the details, tiny details, you guys probably can't see, but I do have the rest of the roses on my uh, pinned on my dress. So tiny details is always a great thing to have people pick up on what you're trying to put out. I'm the world opposite. I say start with something that maybe you wouldn't normally do. I started with my closet, right? You start, go to your closet, what do I have? What colors do I have? And then how can you have fun with it? Take it to the next level. Go thrifting. Find like a weird piece at Goodwill or Savers and turn it into an outfit. Like to me, that's the most fun part about Disney Bounding is the weird things you can find thrifting yeah. and make work for your outfits. I can't tell you how many times I will have found something at a Goodwill and gone, Disney character wears blue dress <laughs> question mark? And just see what Google will give me. Disney character that wears purple fur coat shawl. Google. Uh, my advice is to be true to yourself. Because I like, I had a friend who started this rebounding and was like, it feels like I'm wearing a costume, it's weird. And I'm like, no, just wear your clothes. Like, wear what you would wear. So the personal style I was talking about earlier, once you kind of find that, go with that and you'll feel good at your Disney Um, I would just say also, don't take it too seriously and don't stress yourself out. It does not need to be literal. In fact, it's probably better if it's not. And that way you can put your own style into it. Um, that's really good advice because a lot of people get hung up in the literal interpretation of the character and that's not necessary for Disney Bounty. So we're being told to wrap it up so we're going to go super quick because we have some to tell you about how you're going to get your bags. But um, yellow shoes would be my advice because we don't know how many characters actually wear yellow shoes. <laughs> Um, I would say get your friends involved. I think there's like great accountability when you're in a group and everyone's like looking out for your pieces. Like, oh, I'm at the store. I see this. Do you want this for your bound? Like, 
you know, you almost create your own little squadron of uh, accountability, and I think it'll just emphasize, like, enhance your balance even more when you show up to like your con or at the parks or even just hanging out and you're as a group and everyone's colors are right. Just invite your friends because I brought Disney Valley to my college actually. No one at my college knew what it was, but we have a lot of nerdy Disney fans and you know, next thing you know, we're a whole Beauty and the Beast crew and no one else knew what we were doing, but we knew what we were doing. So you know, get your friends involved, that might help the process. And the confidence level when you have a squad with you. Yeah, more confidence too. <laughs> And I pronounce it my answer, it's always go have fun with your friends. I think most of us got into this as an excuse to play dress up and hang out with our friends and it's grown into something bigger and we've made friends through this. So just go have a fun day with your friends and play dress up as an adult. So that is our time. We're going to wrap up in a second, but panelists can tell everyone one more time your name, where folks can find you online, and then we will be heading out that way with the giveaways. Um, we'll start with Mikey here on the end. Okay, again, I'm Mikey at Mikey's Moments. Um, and I'm Janelle at jcheyenne underscore. I'm Nasreen at the Nest Diaries underscore. I'm Amber at Critique Geek. I'm Erica at Erica Enchanted. I'm Tiffany, follow the yellow brick girl. I'm Leslie, Leslie AK and the Dizzy Bound. I'm Dolly, and I am at the Dolly Wallow. <laughs> Pernell at Pernell the Third. And I'm 